Hello, my darlings. So this is your weekly pick a card reading. The topic today is how to cope within this dystopian hellscape that we're all trapped in right now. <laughs> so we are all depressed and just generally bummed out. So let's see how we can cope within the current system that we're under, okay? What can we do to best take care of ourselves and each other? All right, so remember to use your intuition. Uh, take what resonates, leave what does not. Um, and when you're picking your cards, remember to take a moment, breathe in deep, and let the card come to you in your mind. All right, so let's get started here. We have pile one, pile two, and pile three. So take a moment, pick out your card, and then in the description there will be timestamps so you can jump straight to the pile that you selected, okay? All right, I'll see you over there. All right, pile number one. So let's see what card you selected. How are we coping within this dystopian nightmare we're all stuck in? All right, doable. The key is within your grasp, okay? So I feel like pile number one, you guys do have access to either information, skills, or resources um, that maybe you have not been utilizing, okay? Um, I'm wondering if even you know that some of these resources or are available to you or these gifts or whatever it is, right? Okay, so I will read the actual message from the guidebook for this because there is a ritual that goes along with that. So that's kind of part of the coping advice. Um, but first, let's go ahead. I'm going to set this off to the side and we'll lay out our tarot cards here. So we've got Ten of Swords, Ace of Wands. Okay, so definitely some new information coming in for you. Um, well, new information, it's like new insights. So whatever, whatever these resources, gifts, knowledge, whatever it is that you have or have access to, um, you're set, it, it's like you're suddenly aware of it. Okay. So it's going to kind of come to you quickly. Two of Cups, I do feel like it's related to other people in your life. All right, so I do, there's possibly some help coming through. All right, hold on, Christina, let's just lay these cards out. Okay. Okay, so I do feel like there's a, a person in your life that has the ability to step in and give you some help, okay? So if you've been struggling with money, for instance, um, so money, or it feels like there's some confusion around your next steps. There's an individual that comes in, um, and I, I, I feel that they are involved with this Two of Cups situation that's like a partnering. Um, so I, I actually think they're this Knight of Pentacles. So that it could be an Earth sign. So Virgo, Taurus, or Capricorn in one of their big three placements. Um, this person, I feel like kind of helps shed some light on a situation, on your situation, that you really hadn't considered yet, okay? I do feel like there is an ending of a phase of sorts here with the Ten of Swords, so um, this could be a belief system around money. So the person coming in has the potential to kind of wake you up to uh, the resources you already have at hand, okay? So I feel like um, if you've been kind of feeling like you're struggling with money or you want to take steps to bring in more money and you're just kind of confused around that, um, like 
confused on how to make that happen for yourself. This person, this Knight of Pentacles, comes in. I feel like they are really reasonable, responsible, stable people. This could be in the form of like a financial advisor type, okay? This could be somebody that um, turns you on to new investments that you hadn't considered before. I, I do feel like you're showing up here as this Queen of Pentacles, so self-care queen over here. We're taking good care of ourselves. That's the energy that we want to move toward. So, you know, during this societal collapse or whatever we got going on, <laughs> it's important to remember to take good care of yourself, your physical body, and your finances, okay? I do feel like the, the key within your grasp are those two things, your actual health and your, your financial health. So this person, I feel like, comes in with messages like um, ways to boost up your your finances without having to put forth um, crazy amounts of physical effort, but it's like in an innovative way in or in which to do that. Okay, so that's like this page of wands. There's there's this learning experience coming through associated with this individual. Um. I do want to go ahead and let you know there's good luck surrounding this, okay? So with your health and your finances, um, there's good luck around this. Um, and it feels like there's a progression happening here. So we're, we're going from this kind of um, sink or swim or dog eat dog mentality kind of having this aha moment, okay? And we're working through like taking better care of ourselves, partnering up with this person in order to make better investments. And that kind of clarifies, you know, uh, our goals, our financial goals for the future. All right. So there's a lot of luck around this. I think this Knight of Pentacles has a lot to teach you um, about your finances. I do want to read, let's just go ahead and read this doable card because I'm so curious as to what this ritual is. And if you like this deck, it is the Magic of You Oracle deck by Fiona Horn. All right, so what you seek is within your grasp. As with all yeses, there are adjustments. Release yourself from a ling lingering mental prison of fear that you are not enough, that you are not worthy. You have the right key, don't doubt it. It's time to be grateful for your teachers, even the ones whose lessons you didn't necessarily like. Past lovers, past employers, bullies, cyber stalkers, all had lessons to teach you. Incredibly, when you meditate on gratitude for these lessons, the struggles around you dissipate. The key to opening the rest of your life hovers within your grasp. It's yours to use. The girl of doable fearlessly breaks through the glass ceiling and grabs the potent symbol of her getting of wisdom, the golden key. Tears of blood are shed, residues of past pains and losses, reflected in the carved face on the entryway above her, are now transformed into power and assertiveness. If this card is drawn at a time you are seeking to step up into the next widely acknowledged level of success, whether it be career advancement, passing a test, being accepted into an institute of learning, this card in indicates that the answer is yes. So your ritual here, choose a closed doorway that opens away from you in your home. Lick the index finger of your writing hand and name your door with a word representing your goal trace and spit. Using incense or a smudge stick, fan the smoke around the edges of the door while meditating on what you want. When you are ready, open the door and step through. Know that what you desire is now possible and happening. You have broken through the glass ceiling. You have navigated your obstacles and you are free to grow and evolve into the next best version of you. Okay, so that's the ritual to do. Help you break through um, with some financial success, I, I really strongly, for some reason, feel like it's your finances. Um, all right, and then also when I was shuffling earlier, um, I was only going to pull one of these, but you got two pop on, popping out. So 
By giving thanks, I initiate abundance. Through generosity, I spread it around. So when you give thanks, you attract abundance. Focus on what you have, not what you don't. It's not about how many likes you got on your social post, but about each individual who took the time to engage with your little creative space. They shared a moment with you, and that is fucking beautiful. It's not about the amount of money you still need, but about the ocean of abundance already surrounding you. When you pay attention to what you do have, you realize there is always enough and never too little. The universe provides. When you generously give thanks and share your abundance, you spread joy to all areas of your life. So there's that message regarding your ability to bring in money. I feel like that's a strong indicator that you do have the ability to attract in the money that you're wanting. Um, so by taking it slow here, let's be being mindful, practicing gratitude for what we currently have. So we're kind of able to shift our mindset, even if temporarily it counts. Okay. Like I know with like the law of attraction, I have a lot of issues with it because it's almost like you have to be positive hundred percent all the time, but that's not possible for humans to do. So, um, I do feel like attract does all attract like though. So if you can even shift into that moment of gratitude and like considering the blessings you already have, even like a couple times a day, I feel like eventually that does start to almost rewire, rewire your brain on what you focus on. Um, and that puts out the energy that attracts abundance toward you, right? I mean, there's, it's really just spicy psychology, you know, like almost rewiring like the, the negative voices in our heads. We're retraining ourselves basically is all it is. All right. So when I slow down, I feel alive in stillness. I learn how to fly. So practicing mindfulness, mindfulness for both of these. As you twirl in this experience and the fast-paced days tug your dress, remember that the race is not real. There is no competition. All that matters is that you, so beautiful in your sparkles, only hit the throttle in areas of life that call you to dance, especially if it means naps by the river, sunsets on the hill, and bear hugs for days. Be still, Be still caterpillar. Only in stillness will you learn how to fly. Inhale, exhale, jive, Neverland awaits. All right, so pile number one, that is your, these are your coping techniques, okay? <laughs> so take care out here in this apocalyptic wasteland and I will see you next time. Bye. All right, pile number two, welcome in. So let's check out what you selected for your coping mechanisms. Okay, honor yourself, euphoria. All right, so really taking better care of yourself mentally. Um, I think especially in our Western American society, if you're over here with us in America, um, we're constantly told to not be ourselves, to fit in certain boxes, um, and especially with this rise in like conservatism, really extremism, period. We're really not allowed to be ourselves. Um, and if you are on like the, you know what, whatever, the conservative spectrum, like it's, there, we're told all the time not to be LGBTQIA+. We're not supposed to uh, read certain books. We're not supposed to. <laughs> practice magic like there's just not an embracing an embracing attitude of who we who each individual is and honoring that that spark of individuality which is really in my opinion divinity like it's divinity expressing itself through us um, and it expresses itself through us in all sorts of different ways but honoring yourself by being your true authentic self okay 
I mean, we really need everybody to be themselves and like, I don't know, tend our own gardens, you know, instead of trying to force other people to be exactly what we want them to be because we think it's right. Um, so I'm just going to set out these uh, tarot cards here. Let's see what we got going on. But, okay, so we've got the High Priestess that came out. We've got the Knight of Cups. So it does feel like with, like, honoring yourself, it's getting back in touch with your feelings, with your heart, with your intuition. Um, a lot of times we are looking externally for answers um, when actually we already know the answer within us. We almost are just looking for confirmation that that's the right choice. And I'm here to tell you, if your intuition is telling you something, um, you don't really necessarily, well, I guess double checking is fine, right? But I want you to trust that instinct, okay? I want you to trust your voice. If something feels, if a situation feels off, if you feel like, wow, I didn't really like that that guy said that to me, but I don't know why I don't like that he said that to me. I get a weird feeling from him. You know, trust that instinct and take care of yourself, okay? Honor your yourself by honoring your intuition. We have that for a reason. All right. I feel like almost that was just an aside. <laughs> but Six of Pentacles, the world, Two of Cups. Ten of Pentacles and Knight of Pentacles. Okay, so honoring ourselves by listening to our intuition, trusting ourselves more, right? Leaning more toward our own happiness. What what does joy mean for us and how do we create that joy in our lives? I feel like there is a lot of outside noise with this Five of Wands. We've got a lot of conflicting opinions and people constantly fighting with each other about what's the right way to do this what's you know how should we actually be treating each other there's there's just a lot of arguments and I think it does detract from the actual work of helping each other with the six of pentacles here um, the the arguing the outside noise really distracts us from doing the important work of like reconnecting with our community. We've got Ten of Pentacles here um, with the Six of Pentacles. It's like reconnecting with our our community. Uh, two Two of Cups, working with each other, um, loving each other, bringing and bringing love to each other. Um, without really a lot of preconditions and offering that to ourselves as well and I think mainly for this reading it's offering that to ourselves um, and for you guys I feel like actually helping other people helps you to bring that love to yourself so yes you're helping others and that's good and that like makes them feel good and puts them in just even a slightly momentary better space but the main good here for you guys, I feel like, is actually doing good for others makes you, reconnects you with your true self, with your divine self, okay? We do have the world, so there's like this cycle, there's a system closing out. Um, the world feels like an ending of fake happiness. Ten of Cups. The world feels like the ending of the lies we've been telling ourselves about what happiness means. All right, it's not the rat race. It's not buying boats and big houses and how many zeros are in our paychecks. Okay, I feel like the how we're moving now with Pluto coming out of Capricorn and going into Aquarius. It's a lot more about the greater good and taking care of each other, taking care of each other within our community and taking better care of ourselves and also embracing our authenticity. Um, so I feel like that is your part in this, taking steps to look after yourself, stabilize yourself, ground yourself, um, 
and really learning and practicing that self-love aspect. Um, let me go ahead and read Euphoria here for your ritual. Okay, this is going to be your coping mechanism. Um, <laughs> so, let's see what we've got. All right, so Euphoria, honor yourself. The white goddess with a feathered snake or swan countenance uh, represents the sacred fusion of air and earth, divine inspiration bonded with earthly tangibility. There is a sensual aspect to this card. It is now your duty to honor your physical self in an exalted way. Have you been abusing your body, poor eating, excess of toxic substances, and dragging yourself through workouts you don't enjoy is punishing, not celebrating yourself. Don't put anything in your body that is not worthy of your goddess status or God. Uh, quality over quantity is key at this time. Awaken to your sacred self. Be selective about who you allow in physical proximity to you. In matters of sex and sensuality, do not share your sacred self with someone who is not worthy of you or who does not treat you in an honorable and respectful way. The woman of euphoria holds her hands gently and seductively over her heart as she considers uh, the blessed magnificence of her reality. She is quiet and reflective. This is a deep inner comprehension, not bound by society's laws and others' opinions. Okay, and I just want to point out, again, high priestess, not bound by other people's opinions, your self-love, okay? Inside, she is infinite, and her physical form is the gateway. So your ritual here is called sensual self-care. So take a bath or shower and massage your body with mica-infused body lotion. Uh, mica is a fine, reflective crystal, and you can mix a quarter teaspoon into a cup of organic body cream for a handmade version. Take your time to massage yourself slowly, coming into a sensuous awakening in your skin. When your body is glowing and relaxed, perform the following meditation. Oh, let me just show you so you can see this. So you're standing at the edge of a hill on a path that winds in a wide spiral down into the center of a valley. As you follow the path down, you become aware of glowing fireflies, like sparks of inspiration and motes of stars floating around you. You reach the bottom and there is a large white snake coiled on a rock. Its glowing skin is transfixing and you feel safe and connected to the ancient goddess energy around you. You lie on the ground. It is dark, warm, and like the snake, you too glow a transcendental white. In this sacred space, you are profoundly aware of your core sensuous and beautiful existence. You feel euphoric as waves of bliss tingle over you. The snake peaks, speaks to you, special words especially for you. Remember them, and when you finish the meditation, write them down and place them on your altar as a reminder of your sacred self. Okay, so that is your main coping technique, but I also pulled an oracle card for you. Kind of, these are um, sweet-ass affirmations. I was going to pull one, but two just exploded out, so... The first one you've got here is my mind is King Kong strong and I am even stronger. <laughs> so you know what helps in every situation? The ability to be King Kong strong within your thoughts. Uh, strengthening your mind leads to humility, patience, self-confidence, courage, honesty, focus, flexibility, awareness, gratitude, and the ability to beat resistance and fear gremlins to a pulp. When you create habits to strengthen your mind, like meditation, creative expression, relaxation, self-love, etc., you strengthen the rest of your life too. So relationships, career projects, sexy time, etc. When you understand that you are also stronger than your mind, your mind follows suit and levels up to superhero status. That cape looks hella fresh on you. All right, so there's that one. And then you've also got, I continuously explore mysterious doors that always lead to more... What is, is that, a, are those butt cheeks? What is that? Okay, sorry. If you're stuck in an old routine, relationship or career that is no longer serving you, it's time to unfurl your new leaves and grow. You didn't come to this planet via your mama's magic portal to squeeze your butt cheeks real tight and reserve your talents. Is that your talent? 
<laughs> it's time to strap on the unicorn horn and wings. Open, spread eagle, and blast off into new experiences. I have quite a way with words. When you explore mysterious doors, they always lead to more doors. Infinite opportunity and treasure awaits. If not now, then when? <coughs> All right. So definitely work with this euphoria, honoring yourself, that meditation, that bath. Um, because you're key to like coping with and surviving this dystopia. Um, is to take better care of yourself and love yourself in spite of it, all right? In spite of all the negative Nancys out there and all this noise. There's so much noise, okay? All right, we want a King Kong strong mind, and that starts with self-love. All right, so pile number two, thanks for joining me, and I'll see you next time. Bye! All right, pile number three, so let's check out what your coping... Skill, your coping mechanism will be in this dystopian reality. All right. We've got Fergun becoming a loving mirror. That's very love and light of them. So this is like, what is that saying? What It's like projection, right? So if I have a way with words, don't I? Um, what you project is more of a reflection of you than the person you're projecting it on. Okay. Um, that's what I immediately thought when I... Becoming a loving mirror. So I do feel like this is a call to try... Try as you can... As best you can. To be in a loving space with people that are... Um, maybe you're having conflict with. Or disagreeing with. Okay, approaching them with uh, more love and compassion the best that we can. So I'm going to set these out. So we've got the sun. We've got the chariot in reverse. We've got knight of wands. Five of wands, again in that place too. Interesting. Pile number two also have that. Ace of Pentacles, Eight of Swords, Temperance, Ace of Swords, and finally High Priestess. So there's almost this callback to our inner child with the sun here. And Chariot, I usually do think like moving forward, it's cardinal energy, it's starting like new new ventures, right? It's kind of powerful, it's, it's a drive forward. But this way it's almost going, it's going back and is what I first saw when I saw it reverse like that. So going back to the inner child, um, going back to the creative expressions that you loved as a child. Cause I feel like right now you're kind of in this eight of swords, kind of locked up, pent up energy. There's not a lot of self love here. I'm not seeing a lot of self love. So. I think in order to show others love, the kind of love that we want to, uh, we have to give that love to ourselves first, and we really have to embody and feel that. So I do, I do want you to get in touch with that inner child of yours. All right, get back in touch with your creativity. I feel like that's a, a bit stifled. Um, with the five of wands out here. I feel like uh, you've been you've been opposite of the creative inner child mind and have kind of rested at rested in this not rested um, stayed in this mode of like being anal really analytical and valuing you know objective truth over feelings things like that and while I can respect that right like that's necessary and that's needed. Um, we do have to balance that kind of stuff out, okay? Because we are humans and we do have emotional experiences and those are important to acknowledge <laughs> and honor, okay? <clears throat> and when we get too into the intellectual mind and we try to intellectual over intellectual intellectualize things and ignore how we're feeling about a situation, how we're feeling about ourselves, um, we're really locking ourselves away. 
we, we're self we're self sabotaging, okay? And I do feel like we've got two aces here, so I do feel like something wants to come in for you. But I think in order for these things to come in for you, you really do have to um, marry two experiences here. So temperance is like bringing together the physical and the spiritual world. world. For this reading, I feel like it's bringing together your creative mind and your left brain mind, your analytical mind, bringing those together and balancing those out because they're both useful and they're both necessary. So the Knight of Wands reversed tells me there's this, a sort of, um, you're sort of cut off from creativity right now. Um, and that again goes back to this Five of Wands being too reliant on into intellectualizing everything, um, really staying in that left brain activity, right? So let's tap back, in, back into the right brain activity, tapping back into our creativity, getting in touch with our intuition with the high priestess, okay? Um, all, like our psychic abilities, I, I believe are associated with our right, the right side of our brain. So where we also get our artistic flares, uh, sparks of creativity, we also get our intuition. So I really feel like you guys could work with your intuit, your creativity in order to get in touch with your intuition. There we go. That was difficult to get out, wasn't it? <laughs> All right, so let's read our advice here though. We have a ritual. So Fergan, becoming a loving mirror. All right. The simple unselfish joy that comes from knowing something good has happened to someone else fulfills and heals the angry, self-pitying soul. It's time for emotional unification and appreciation for self and others. When we delight in the well-being and success of others, we mirror in these thoughts. As has been demonstrated and proven in the science of quantum physics, we become a part of what we identify and acknowledge. Unconditional appreciation for others' happiness is liberation. It touches our soul and reverberates through our experience of life like the delicate ripples across the man's heart. It is time to be brave and put your fear, resentment, jealousy, and anger aside and delight in the joy of others. Trust and know that by this simple contemplation and observation, your own heart is healed and restored and your life will reflect the joy and success you see around you perfectly and uniquely. All right, so your, your ritual here, I'm gonna put out here so you can maybe zoom in. So it's black scrying. Fill a glass or crystal bowl with pure water and in it place three to four drops of India ink. Swirl with a spoon. As the water darkens, gaze into the soothing depths and think about the people whose lives you envy or feel embittered by. Allow yourself to soften and contemplate their happiness. Consider that their joy, freedom, and happiness now resonates in your heart too. Feel liberated and trusting, knowing that what you see in them is now in you. When you feel relaxed and refreshed, pour the water onto the earth. Think is not toxic. And let your life resonate with pure, unselfish joy. So again, with the sun energy here, tapping into that joy. What is our joy here? Um, all right. And then I did pull two sweet ass affirmations for you. Um, so the first one here is I choose love. I try on all shapes, sizes, and colors. Love is the infinite web that weaves all light, life, and purpose together. It is the glue that makes us passionate and bonkers at the same time. Choosing love does not stop suffering, but it helps you rise above it. We live for love. We create for love. We share ice cream for love. We even die for love. Love is not some massive achievement to strive for. Love is everything, every glance, conversation, meal, story, and experience. Just like ice cream, try on love of all shapes, sizes, flavors, and colors, and more. You might be surprised at what exotic new loves you will find. All right, and then the next one here, I am in love with all my parts. I am vibrant and sexy AF. 
You are so fucking perfect and gorgeous just the way you are. Otherwise, you wouldn't be you. Your unique shapes, flavors, aurora, auroras, aromas, vibrations, and colors are pure gifts to this planet. As flowers open up to bloom in celebration of the sun, so too should you open your rainbow wings and shine your sexy on everyone, including yourself. Is it time to make out with the mirror? OMG, right? It's getting hot in here, you sexy thing. All right, these are silly, but seriously, showing ourselves more love, more kindness, getting in touch with that creativity really honors that divinity in us and helps us uh, get back in touch with our intuition, all right? We want to be a loving mirror out in the world. All right, so pile number three. You guys take good care of yourselves out there in this post-apocalyptic wasteland, and I will see you next time. Bye.